speaker is going to give uh, two lectures on uh, various uh, topics uh, related to uh, gravitational radiation. Um, so I'd like to start by, um, by justifying um, this, uh, this uh, summer course. So the um, question is why? Uh, why, why do we study? gravitational uh, radiation, or in fact, uh, uh, what is uh, gravitational radiation? And um, of course, one of the important reasons um, is this uh, uh, first gravitational wave detection. Um, I mean, all of you um, have heard of it. Oh, by the way, these are the, um, the references I'm going to use uh, in, this, uh, uh, in this lecture. Um, this is uh, communication in uh, mathematical physics. So, um, and this is an event that is called uh, GW150914. Um, um, so, this is the first um, detection of gravitational wave. Uh, that actually happened in 2015, uh, September uh, 14. And, um, and one mathematical formula you can pick up from this uh, uh, event uh, is the following. Uh, so <clears throat> 36 plus 29 is equal to uh, 62. Okay. And what, what does that correspond to? Um, so it turns out this, uh, um, this detection of this uh, uh, event actually correspond to um, the mergers of, uh, of two black holes. Okay, uh, one uh, with uh, 36 solar mass and the other um, with um, 29 solar mass, okay, um, results in a new black hole. Um, with uh, um, 62 solar mass. So you have two black holes um, with the respective mass, and they're actually rotating um, about each other, and in the end, uh, merge into a single black hole. But of course, anyone um, observed this uh, discrepancy, okay? Um, so this is 65 instead of uh, 62. So this uh, discrepancy is supposed to be accounted for by uh, gravitational radiation. So the energy, um, well, it's, um, this merge of two black holes uh, release energy, and the energy uh, radiated away, and therefore um, you actually lose uh, um, uh, three solar mass. Well, okay. So is there a theory link can explain exactly how much will be lost? Or? Yeah, that's actually what we're we're interested. <laughs> okay. So um, so let me let me just uh, show you um, a picture um, that describe what happened. So, um, yeah, maybe I'll draw here. So, um, just imagine that this is a time direction, okay? So this is what happened uh, when we studied GR. Uh, your time direction points to the future. And um, there is some um, astronomical event here. This is a source of, uh, of event. And in this case, correspond to uh, two black holes. Okay. 
And um, so this information uh, propagated along uh, light rays. Okay, so these are actually uh, light rays. Um, which, well, which is also known or AKA uh, non geodesics. So this is one of the um, axioms in general relativity: uh, the um, light travel uh, in now directions along now geodesics. Okay, and um, <clears throat> and the observers. So this is where um, gravitational wave uh, detection uh, happens. Uh, it's actually situated here. So you should really think, so this is actually re really, really far away at infinity, okay? And, um, and this is actually, uh, well, the topic of this uh, course. This is actually so-called, well, I'm gonna talk more about this one here, but uh, this is so-called uh, now infinity or future now infinity. Or um, why this is open, um, denoted as uh, stripe. So um, this is actually where we are, okay? So we, um, on the Earth, uh, try to observe a gravitational wave. So the information uh, will propagate along, uh, light ge along now geodesic gear. And um, so this is where uh, a slide go, okay? So they have, um, if you read it, they're actually two, um, you know, two bins, really, really long, several miles long. And this is so-called the uh, uh, interferometer. And, um, <clears throat> so the point is that, um, well, you want to study um, how, um, you know, how, how light rays are bended by um, gravitational waves. Uh, by gravitational field. So basically, um, you study, you know, light rays, how, and this is really go back to a geodesic equation or the variation of a geodesic equation, and this is so-called uh, Jacobi equation of, uh, of now geodesics. Okay. So you actually, um, you know, you, you actually detect something. There's uh, some signal here. And of course, one of the conclusion is actually this path. So why does this, uh, why does the, um, why does the, um, the signal <coughs> detected by, um, by LIGO correspond to um, two black hole mergers Of uh, uh, respective masses. Okay, and in this part um, so far in, in gravitational wave uh, uh, detection, it, it is really based on um, some linear uh, linearized uh, approximation of uh, of Einstein's equation. or uh, some numerical method and plus some uh, post-Newtonian mechanics, okay? Um, but we, we're actually mathematicians. So we're actually interested in the, in, in the fourth theory or in the, in the nonlinear theory. And that's actually uh, the goal of, uh, of this, uh, you know, this summer course. We want to understand the mechanism of, uh, of gravitational radiation and uh, understand the uh, mathematical uh, theory. Okay, so this is our uh, <coughs> so mathematical theory of, uh, in particular, uh, the nonlinear theory of uh, uh, gravitational radiation. So, um, so the, well, the, the object of study um, is uh, 
isolated uh, gravitating system. Um, but really, um, what it means mathematically is just uh, uh, asymptotic flat space time. Um, that satisfies, well, in general, satisfy our Einstein's equation. Uh, but, well, for the purpose of this talk, uh, we'll just focus on our vacuum uh, Einstein's equation. Okay, so this is the um, object of study. Um, I mean, just imagine you have an you know, astronomical event very uh, far away, and we just look at it. And the gravitation is actually weak um, at infinity. And, um, <clears throat> and so uh, let me just say a few words. By the way, I mean, I think, well, you know, as you can see, uh, the, the nature of this, uh, this uh, mini course, we, we have to uh, assume something at a different level. Um, I mean, of course, I mean, I, I think the, the, the target of uh, uh, the, our target uh, audience are actually uh, events uh, undergraduate student or graduate student. So we're assuming that you actually know some basic uh, uh, geometry and some um, basic uh, uh, differential equations. Okay. So uh, let me just say a few words uh, what I mean. Um, so well, a space time to us is just a, um, so a space time uh, is, a, um, is a four manifold. Uh, with a uh, uh, Lorentz metric. So I just write it as G alpha beta. Okay? And you recall a uh, Lorentz metric is just a symmetric 0 2 tensor uh, with a signature minus plus plus plus. Okay? I will talk about this asymptotic flat condition, uh, asymptotically flat, sorry. This asymptotic flat condition um, later, but um, it's going to satisfy the, um, the Valken Einstein equation. So, um, the Valken Einstein equation. Um, is just uh, uh, R alpha beta equals zero, where um, R alpha beta is the, uh, the Ricci curvature. Okay, so I assume you've seen this uh, um, definition of Ricci curvature, uh, basically formed by um, second derivatives of um, of this uh, uh, G alpha beta here. I mean, you can uh, find it in any uh, standard test. You you uh, differentiate G alpha beta once you get a Christoffel symbol, and then um, you take one more derivative, uh, you get uh, the curvature tensor. An important thing is that um, well later we're going to see. Um, I mean, under a uh, suitable gauge, um, this vacuum Einstein equation become um, a second order um, hyperbolic equation for, um, for G alpha beta. So I guess uh, other speakers will probably go uh, into more detail, but uh, for the purpose of this talk, let's just uh, be contented with that. But um, in particular, with, uh, um, with the Vulcan space-time uh, is the following. So let me just uh, uh, remind you very quickly. Um, well, in four dimensions, whenever you talk about symmetry um, zero to tensor, there are actually 10 components. Okay. And uh, in four dimensions, so in, in 4D, um, the Riemannian curvature tensor R alpha beta gamma delta. You recall this, uh, uh, this is a tensor that has actually uh, a lot of symmetries uh, among these indexes. Uh, but if you just count the number of independent components, um, there actually uh, has 20 uh, independent components. OK, 
Okay. Um, but for walking space time, because um, you know um, this Ricci tensor, as I just mentioned, this is a symmetric uh, zero to tensor, um, and so there are actually ten components. Okay, so number of components of uh, of Ricci uh, is actually equal to ten. Um, so at the end, um, if you actually have a vacuum space, uh, vacuum space time, um, the curvature component, the number of independent curvature components is 10. Okay. So for a vacuum space time, the number of uh, um, independent curvature components is actually equal to 10. Okay? And these are um, to be parameterized by uh, the vial curvature. Okay? So um, and therefore, when you study uh, vacuum space up, um, it's important to look at these uh, uh, 10 curvature components. And um, but these ten converged components, you have you know there are different ways to um, to actually to parameterize them. Um, this is actually uh, one of the difficulties of uh, this uh, subject. I mean, uh, different people use different notations, and it's sometimes uh, they are difficult to uh, compare different uh, notations. Okay, and um, for this vowel curvature tensor, um, if you look at the literature, uh, I think. Um, <coughs> For physics, um, I mean, this is a so-called uh, Newman-Penrose uh, formulation. They actually, um, param they, they actually can find a friend that param to parameterize them into, um, you know, uh, five uh, complex functions. Okay. Of course, they actually depend on your, your coordinate. Okay. So there are actually uh, five of them. For example, if you uh, read reference two, um, you're going to see that the, these uh, notations actually correspond to the vial curvature, and they're actually uh, five of them, okay? uh, independent components. Uh, but later in the other talk, um, I mean, they are actually parameterized by, you know, um, some things like alpha, beta, uh, rho, sigma, or rho, sigma, beta, bar, and alpha, bar. Okay? Uh, this is actually a different um, kind of notation that will actually uh, come up. But the important thing is that uh, once you assume your space sign is vacuum and uh, you want to look at the curvature, okay, and, and there are actually 10 components and depend on how you actually uh, parameterize. And often um, in representing these uh, curvature components, uh, you use actually friends, okay, instead of uh, uh, using coordinate variables. Okay? So uh, we'll, we'll come to that uh, later. Okay? <clears throat> Okay, so let's look at our, our first uh, example. Uh, of course, it's always uh, uh, the, 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 the trivial one, but uh, well, there are already a lot of information uh, in Mikowski uh, space time. Okay, and of course, the, uh, the standard uh, metric uh, is just written in terms of this uh, um, standard um, coordinate system, TR theta phi. And the metric is uh, minus dt squared plus dr squared plus r squared d theta squared plus psi squared theta d phi squared. Okay. Of course, this part here is simply a flat metric or Euclidean metric. On uh, R3. Okay. So this is a very... Uh, you know, uh, doesn't have any cur all, all, all curvature, all 20 curvature components uh, vanish uh, for, um, for, the, um, for the Mikowski space time, okay? And, um, well, I often uh, use this notation, so theta, I denote theta by x2 and phi by, uh, by x3, okay? And um, so I actually write it as uh, this theta squared plus sine squared theta, uh, d phi square uh, as sigma tilde a b dx a dx b. So this is actually the uh, standard um, wrong metric on a unit two sphere. Okay. 
So I use this notation um, interchangeably. In particular, this, this one with tilde would denote just uh, uh, the wrong metric. And therefore, um, this is minus dt squared plus dr squared plus r squared sigma tilde ab dxa dxb. So you can see sometimes I just use t as, uh, as x0 and r as x1. But actually, very soon we're going to change the coordinate. Okay. But you see, in, in study, um, gravitational radiation is very important um, to keep track of the, the null geodesics. Okay. So the distinctive feature of this is actually you, you want to study null geometry. Okay. Um, because that's the direction uh, where light rays uh, travel. And um, in this case, of course, you can see that, um, well, for Mikowski, this is a, we use this a t, t direction, right? And this is the, uh, the R3, okay? And this is the R direction, okay? So it's very natural to, uh, to introduce a new coordinate system to adapt to the, to the geometry, okay? And very commonly, we just use a, 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 um, a coordinate called retarded coordinate, okay? So introduce. So the retarded time coordinate. U. Uh, so U is actually equal to T minus R. Okay. And um, the important thing is that because you can see that, um, well, U equal to constant will correspond to this kind of 45 degree. Uh, and they, they actually correspond to now, uh, now geometry. Okay. So this is a new coordinate system. And uh, with this new coordinate system, you can actually, um, well, you can replace T by U. So we use uh, U, R, theta phi coordinate. We can actually rewrite this, uh, uh, this metric here. So it's actually very simple because you, you can just use, uh, so let me just show you. So use T is equal to U plus R. And therefore, DT is equal to DU plus DR. And therefore, um, we can actually rewrite this part here. This is going to be minus dt squared. So that's going to be minus du plus dr squared plus dr squared. Okay. And now you can just uh, uh, expand it. And you notice that dr squared cancel with one of the dr squared. So you actually have minus du squared uh, plus uh, minus 2 du dr. So the full metric actually becomes minus du squared minus 2 du dr plus r squared sigma tilde xb dxa dxb. So this is going to be our um, sort of model metric. Um, this is actually the, the flat metric, Mikowski metric. And it can actually be written down as uh, 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 in this form. Okay. And, um, well, when, you look, when you're given this metric here, um, a very important thing is to observe that, uh, as I just mentioned, um, this u here, u equal to constant, will correspond to this kind of uh, uh, now direction. So how do you see that? Um, when you're table, whenever you take this metric here and you want to look at the induced metric on this kind of level set of u, um, what you can do is you simply replace this u here by a constant. Okay? And therefore, you can see you're only left with this part here. So um, the, in, can, can you see from, uh, is this okay or should I? Okay. So the induced metric on a, um, on a U level set. Okay. When you replace this U by, um, by a constant, uh, it's actually so you're only left with this part here, and this is only a two-dimensional metric. You have a three-dimensional manifold. Right? We're talking about uh, you know, a differentiable manifold dimension. You have a, you, know, you, you look at a level set. As long as the level set is regular, it should be three-dimensional. But this is a three-dimensional manifold with only a two-dimensional metric. So this metric is actually now. Okay? So uh, in fact, it's just this R squared sigma tilde A, B, D, X, B, D, X, B. Okay. And therefore, uh, this U level set are actually um, now hypersurfaces.
Uh, what about the, um, the R coordinate? Okay? So just look at the, the metric there. Um, so you can see that the R level set are actually uh, are time-like hypersurfaces. So you can see the, uh, the induced metrics are actually minus du squared plus r0 squared. This is where uh, r equal to, let's say r equal to r0. Okay, the sigma tilde ab dxa dxb. Uh, so this is a timeline hypersurface because this is a, a three metric, but you have signature uh, minus and, uh, and plus, uh, two plus over there. Okay, so this is actually a timeline hypersurface. But more importantly, uh, this DDR here, okay, so we look at this coordinate vector here. So this is actually now, okay, um, the reason being, um, you know, you, you look at what DDR is, so DDR, DDR, uh, this is actually GRR, and this is equal to zero. So you are missing this uh, um, DDR component here. Okay. So we know this, uh, if you take this vector field and you integrate it, uh, it's going to be a, uh, a null curve. Okay. But in fact, uh, this curve here is going to be uh, a null geodesic. So in fact, or the uh, integral curve of DDR are actually now geodesics. And this is what we're interested in. I'm really, as I say, I mean, we, we try to track this kind of uh, now geodesics in, in your space time, okay? So how do you see this is actually um, equal to zero? Uh, well, basically, you have four coordinate vectors. So, for example, uh, by the way, um, yeah, I'm just going to use this bracket. So, this is actually, uh, this, this just denote the metric, and this is just uh, the Levy Civita connection. Okay, um, so this is your, your G metric. I'll use this, uh, uh, this bracket here. Okay, so for example, uh, <coughs> Um, this is actually equal to a half of uh, dr, grr, and this is equal to zero. And uh, um, this is actually equal to dr, gru minus, uh, because r, well, you don't have any ur component, in fact, uh, so you can actually move this one here, uh, so minus um, DDR, uh, DDU, DDR. <clears throat> and you see you can actually exchange these two because they are coordinate vectors. And then you can write it as uh, uh, DR of GRU minus uh, a half of DU of GR. Okay. I mean, of course, you, if you like, you can just go back to this uh, formula for Christopher symbols, and you can relate to the um, to the derivative of the metric. But now you can see that in this uh, coordinate here, our GRU, so GRU will correspond to half of this uh, this coefficient. That's actually minus one, and this is actually equal to zero, and therefore we see this is equal to zero. In a similar manner, you can actually check uh, that uh, DD, this, uh, this is also equal to zero. Okay, and it simply tells you that this is, uh, the acceleration is actually equal to zero. And not only is it, it's actually a affine parameter. I mean, this R is going to be the, uh, the affine parameter, okay? So R is actually um, important uh, here, especially this DDR. Uh, <coughs> Um, this DDR vector field. So, 
So in this terminology, this DDR actually form, uh, forms a, uh, a well, now geodesic congruence. And um, important um, property also from here is that, um, well, let's, let's now denote uh, L by uh, this DDU, uh, DDR. Okay. And um, as I said, well, I mean, you often will use a null frame to, uh, um, to represent it. And um, so you can actually take uh, the other, well, now you have four dimensional, so you actually need the uh, four frames. Okay. And um, I can actually use E2 uh, is equal to 1 over R dd theta. And E3 is equal to uh, 1 over R, 1 over sine theta dd phi. And then you can check uh, that um, you know, this e EAEB uh, is equal to uh, delta AB. So this, this part is actually orthogonal. And now you can actually compute. So I'll just leave it as an exercise, this part here. So this L and EA and EB, um, this is actually equal to 1 over R of delta AB. Okay. Just by a, uh, you know, you know how, the, the way you relate the Christopher symbol to, uh, to the derivative of metric. Okay. So you can check that this is actually true. I will come back to this uh, later, okay? Uh, but now, right now, just see that we actually have a uh, you know, now vector field that generate uh, now geodesics. You also satisfy this kind of uh, um, this property, okay? And um, well, we now we actually have family of now geodesics here. So you can see the picture now is uh, you have your uh, these are u equal to uh, constant hypersurface in your uh, space time here. And um, of course, because uh, you know DDR is not a variable, so we know that DDR is also tangent to uh, to uh, uh, to uh, to this uh, u equal to constant. This is DDR. This is DDR. This might not be the same as the DDR that you think of, uh, uh, you know, in in, uh, in in for example, in this coordinate system. In this coordinate, think of DDR as in the space-like direction, okay? But here in this new coordinate system, DDR uh, is actually a null direction, okay? You recall this is a, I mean, of course, you still have these functions, T and R and theta phi, R uh, as a function never change. But you recall DDR, whenever you talk about coordinate vector here, it really depends on how you choose other coordinate, okay? So in particular, I mean, this is, the reason why this is tangent is because uh, you, you see that DDR, of u is actually equal to zero because this is a, they're both a, a coordinate variables. Okay, so this is sort of uh, counterintuitive, but uh, but if you look at this one here, you know DDR is a null vector, and you check it, you know this is actually correspond to null geodesics. Is that okay? Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, so these are null geodesics that go out to infinity, and this is what we're interested. in. Right, you remember this picture that I draw. You have something, uh, you know, some black hole merger between and the signal transmitted along now geodesics. So we actually want to follow this now geodesics all the way um, to the place where R is infinity. Okay. So we want to follow. These uh, now geodesics. all the way to um, r equal to infinity. Okay. But of course, this is infinity. Uh, we cannot really see that. Okay. And uh, so here's, here comes a very important uh, idea. And this actually appeared uh, you know, many times. You recall this uh, point gray model uh, for hyperbolic space. Okay. This is uh, the disk model. That actually can be considered as, a, well, you know that this, when you, when you will follow the geodesics, it actually take infinite time to reach the boundary. Okay. But there, in that case, we're taking a conformal quantification. Okay. So the same ideas exactly apply here. So we use uh, um, 
use a conformal compatification. This is actually uh, Penrose's idea to visualize r equal to infinity. Okay. So let's uh, let's carry out this uh, um, this 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 procedure here. Is that okay? Yeah. So of course the easiest way to um, I mean, to bring an infinity to a um, to a finite time is just uh, uh, redefine it. Uh, look at uh, x equal to one over r. So let's just take uh, x equal to one over r. So r equal to infinity becomes uh, uh, x equal to zero. Okay, and therefore we can actually rewrite this uh, uh, this metric here. Okay. This is our uh, our metric. Uh, let's move. Okay, so in particular, r is equal to uh, x to the minus one, and therefore dr is equal to minus x to the minus two, uh, dx. Okay, so I can actually uh, plug in. So now let's use uh, uh, use u x theta phi as coordinate system. And a very simple um, calculation uh, will give you uh, the following. So let me just call this one g alpha beta dx alpha dx beta. Right? Um, so g alpha beta dx alpha dx beta h becomes uh, x to the minus 2 minus x squared du squared plus 2 du dx plus sigma AB, DXA, DXB. Okay, so this is a very simple um, calculation. You, you replace your, um, your DR and R by this formula, and you're going to see this one here. Okay, and uh, we're going to consider this one here as a conformal factor. And you can see that, uh, of course, when x becomes 0, this becomes infinity. So you actually go out to infinity. And this is called a, an unphysical space time. Okay. So you write down your original uh, metric as a conformal factor times the unphysical space time. And a very important fact here is that um, so conformal metrics actually have the same uh, now call. Okay? Because you recall, when you, whenever you talk about now call, uh, you correspond to uh, you know, where um, this metric is equal to zero. And you're just multiplying by something here. So the now, the now vector is actually preserved. Okay? So this is actually um, suitable for study um, this, uh, this uh, now, now, now geometry. Okay? And, um, and in this case, of course, uh, r, r equal to infinity will correspond to, to x equal to 0. Okay? And, um, and you can see that um, x equal to 0. So this is actually an um, unphysical space time. Again, you apply the same trick, x equal to 0 here. This is 0. This is 0 here. You're left with this one here. So x equal to 0 uh, will actually correspond to a null hypersurface in a unphysical space time. Uh, now again, a uh, now hypersurface. In the uh, physical. <coughs> and um, <coughs> and this is a. Uh, this is. Uh, you know, this is, is uh, the future now infinity. Or square. Okay. So now we can actually draw a picture here. Um, so this is... Uh, uh, 
So again, uh, we have this uh, u equal to constant. Okay. So originally everything go out to infinity, but now we actually use this conformal compactification to bring it back um, to finite, and this would be a uh, scribe plus, and they correspond to r equal to uh, infinity, or x equal to uh, to, uh, to zero. Okay. So this is a picture we're going to see, um, yeah, very very often, and um, <clears throat> in the case of uh, in the case of uh, uh, Mikowski space sum, uh, you actually have a point here that actually corresponds to um, <clears throat> time line infinity. And, um, and you can actually perform a, uh, this is just a near, near future now infinity, but you can actually perform a full scale compactification, and that is called a Penrose diagram. I know Yekai may talk about it, may or may not talk about it <laughs> in, the, in the afternoon. Okay? So the full compactification. That's the so-called uh, Penrose diagram. Okay, um, so that will actually correspond to the uh, you know past now infinity and all that. But let, let me just uh, uh, talk about this uh, here. Okay, so we actually have a and now infinity uh, here. But you know this is really um, up to the choice of the coordinate system. So um, yeah, we'll we'll come back to this uh, uh, to this issue uh, later. Okay, so this is the, uh, the, the Mikowski uh, space time. And, um, and of, we know this is just a flat space and there's no curvature at all. So, in a way, that is, it's not, not really. It's, a, it's just a trivial sort of reference space time. And of course, uh, the next interest in space time is the so called uh, Schwarzschild space time. Okay? So, um, <clears throat> let's look at the uh, Schwarzschild space time. Uh, actually, oh, I just erased this as well, yeah, but that's okay. Okay, uh, so Schwarzschild space time. Um, so this uh, in the uh, in Schwarzschild coordinate. It's actually um, this, and um, and again we want to find out uh, a um, well a generalization of a retarded time coordinate. Okay, but it turns out uh, this this one here doesn't really work for Schwarzschild. Okay, because it actually doesn't correspond to null geodesic. Okay, you can see the metric is different. So um, what we need to try is actually the following. So we actually introduce. Um, u is equal to t minus r minus 2n of log r minus 2n divided by 2n. Okay. By the way, this, uh, this, this m here, u is assumed to be uh, positive, and this is the so-called Schwarzschild mass. Okay? Um, and um, you can actually argue how you obtain this one here. Uh, what you can do is you can actually, well, whenever, when you're given this metric here, uh, you can look at uh, the Jodesi equation. I mean, you, you know how to write down uh, the Jodesi equation. It involves the Christopher symbols. And then you, when you solve um, those Jodesi equations, Jodesi is still actually uh, invariant under the symmetry of, uh, of Schwarzschild. You can actually get that. This is actually equal to a constant. Okay? And of course, another way to look at it is um, you can just plug in this into your equation. So again, you actually have... Uh, T is equal to U, my, uh, U plus R plus 2M of log of uh, R minus 2M divided by 2M. Okay? And uh, just like before, you just, uh, you just plug in. Okay? You can just plug in this. So this DT is equal to DU plus DR uh, plus 2M. <coughs> uh, 2M divided by uh, R minus 2M of DR. And if you put these two together, this is actually du plus, uh, so r minus 2, and this is actually 1 over 1 minus 2m divided by r of dr. Okay, so if you uh, plug in this dt here, okay, and then uh, what you're going to get is minus 1 over 2m divided by, and then du 
plus 1 over 1 minus 2 and divided by r dr square plus 1 over 1 minus 2 and divided by r dr square. Okay, so I hope this is, uh, this is okay. Uh, this is really uh, simple algebra. And now you can see that, uh, again, this dr square is actually canceled. Okay? Here you have 1 over 2m square square, and you have a minus 2m here. This one cancel with this. So you're left with this. Okay. So it's very similar to the, um, to the Mikowski metric. So the full metric now becomes minus 2m divided by r du square minus 2 du dr plus r square sigma tilde ab dxa dxb. So in particular, uh, from here, you read off uh, several uh, important information. Uh, you know, just very basic, to, very similar to, um, to the, to the uh, Mikowski case. If you say u equal to a constant, um, the, this is actually a null. Okay, so u level sets are null hypersurfaces. Okay. And also because um, GRR is equal to zero, GR, uh, GUR is equal to minus one. Okay, so this actually implies um, <coughs> this actually implies DDR generates null geodesics. Right. So again, uh, DDR, DDR is equal to zero. And, um, and you, if you compute uh, you know, the, the, the current derivative of DDR with respect to DDR, that's again equal to zero because you just use these two things. Okay? And in fact, um, this other uh, identity is also true. So let me just write down here. So you can see that very similar to, um, to the Mikowski case. Again, you actually have this, uh, um, these uh, uh, null geodesics okay, uh, generated by DDR. And um, they also satisfy this, uh, uh, this condition. But somehow this coefficient is actually different. Okay? So far, we only use uh, um, you know, GR is equal to 0. So DDR is now G uh, GRU is equal to minus 1. So we had uh, DDR is uh, uh, correspond to null geodesics here. But you can see uh, du squared actually has a different coefficient. And um, that in particular implies the, the following. <coughs> well, in the case of Mikowski, um, as I just mentioned, uh, if you set r equal to a constant, this is a timeline hypersurface because you have minus du squared plus this one here. But um, in the case of uh, Schwarzschild, r equal to 2m is a very special uh, level set of r, because when r is equal to 2m, this, is actually, this actually vanishes. So r equal to 2m actually corresponds to the null hypersurface. Okay. So for Schwarzschild, Space time. R equal to two m is say now hypersurface. So this is very different um, from the uh, from the Mikowski case. In the Mikowski case, no matter what your R is, it's always uh, a timeline hypersurface. R equal to constant. This this term vanishes. You have minus du squared and R squared. So the signature is always minus one and a plus plus. But for, uh, for Schwarzschild, you can see that uh, for all other r um, not equal to 2m, you still have timeline hypersurface. But for r equal to 2m, you actually get a, a null hypersurface. Uh, this is actually the event horizon. Okay. So this is event.
Okay, so we can actually perform. Um, so we can perform. Uh, similar compatification and the picture is uh, is different from um, from this uh, um, from the, the, the Mikowski case okay so again you have um, your square plus here okay and you recall this will correspond to um, r equal to infinity this is your future um, now infinity these are um, you know u equal to to constant, but somehow you have uh, uh, another special hypersurface here, and this actually corresponds to r equal to two n, and this is the event horizon. Okay, and. Um, this is the area. Yeah, maybe I should. Okay, so this one here is r equal to two m, and this is the uh, even horizon. And this part here, uh, this is r less than two m. This is a so-called uh, black hole region. So we know um, Schwarzschild space time is actually a, a black hole space time. Okay. Uh, one way to um, you know to describe this uh, um, this future horizon, um, I mean you can you can find it in uh, <coughs> in, in Wall's port uh, is that uh, if you look at a future um, future now geodesic. Okay, so you have a future now ge geodesic. Uh, once you enter this region, you can never escape. Okay, so this is why uh, this is called a, a, a black hole region. Um, so you have some signal. Uh, once you're inside, you'll never be able to um, to escape this uh, this region, but another way, um, yes. Now, why R equal to two m? Well, because that is R equal to infinity. Uh, to this one here. Yeah. Well, you you have to look at the the four uh, conformal compatibility. Okay. Um, yeah, but maybe Ye Ye Kai will, will say a few. <laughs> yeah, but now now I just want to give a. Um, no, I, I, I didn't even perform the compatibility here. I just want to give you an idea of um, this is a, yeah, this is a gut about you know the, um, the but um, but in fact um, yeah, this is actually related to uh, what I, I, I was about to say. Okay, so another way to um, to describe this black hole region is actually uh, the black hole region. Is actually equal to your space time. Minus uh, j minus of uh, of i plus. This means the past. Okay, this is actually how you actually define um, um, the black hole region. You, so you recall um, your the observers are actually sitting here, okay, and the past of um, of uh, uh, of i plus is actually this region here. So the paths of them, they're actually, for, so for example, here, these are points that I that can actually send signal to, uh, to I plus here. Okay. And if you're actually in a black hole region, okay, you won't be able to send signal to, uh, to I plus. And this will become invisible uh, to I plus. So imagine we are, we, we, we're actually sitting here, okay, and anything in, in a black hole, okay, uh, because they are actually in the complement of the past. So if you're actually here, you will be able to send signal. We will be able to see it. But if you're inside this region here, uh, your signal cannot reach I plus here. So this black hole region is actually invisible uh, to, to scribe I. So black hole region is invisible to 
is quite puzzling. Okay, so you can see that uh, why this uh, uh, square plus is actually important. Okay, we talk about um, you know, for, for example, gravitational wave detection actually happen as square plus. Okay, this is how we actually see things, and also um, well, in terms of global structure of space time, okay, the black hole region is actually determined by your I prime, uh, by by square plus. You first have to know where your scribe plus is, right? And look at all the, uh, all the points that can actually send signal to scribe plus. And you remove these points, what is left is the black hole region. Okay? So, um, so in a way that, uh, the, yes? <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so, so this is, uh, um, so in a way that um, we are actually interested in, uh, as I said, our object is, uh, of study is, uh, um, is uh, asymptotic flat um, space-time uh, that satisfies the vacuum equation. And when we or we, we're interested in radiation, uh, we're actually interested in the structure of, uh, of scribe plus. This is a future uh, now infinity. Yeah. I was actually to go slower uh, today. I, I don't, is, that, is that okay? <laughs> okay, um, so uh, I'll see how much I can actually uh, cover. Um, I still have a few pages. But um, are there any questions? I mean, this is supposed to be a summer course uh, instead of a workshop. I mean, uh, yes? Just a question. I yeah. it's R less than two and just a small typo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yes. So, I mean, today I, I tried to uh, look at things from the, 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 the picture of, uh, of now Geodes and make any connections to, uh, to, uh, um, to this gravitational wave. Okay. okay. Um, maybe I can just go over more. I mean, I still have half an hour, right? Yeah. Okay. Huh? No, well, I, I still have uh, two more pages. <laughs> I don't think I will be able to cover all of it, but. Uh, I just feel that one one hour I should take a a, a small. We can take a three minute break. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you people have questions. I can answer questions. I mean, I won't be able to, I won't be able to calculate to you know to do to, to go into detail because you can see <laughs> the nature of this uh, this this course. But I hope. Uh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I think, yeah, for example, these calculations, I mean, that I, that I did here, I mean, you, you should try to do it uh, by, you know, yourself. You know, it's just, just very simple, simple calculation, but, uh, but also help you to, uh, you know, to, to see, uh, the to view the structure of your space time. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so so far we talk about these uh, this two space time, you know, Mikhausi and, and, and Shuasho. Uh, unfortunately, they, they don't have any radiation. Okay, so um, <clears throat> so Mikowski <coughs> and Schwarzschild. Do not uh, emit um, radiation. Okay, so they, in fact they're both uh, uh, static. Okay, so you're not going to see you know um, you know energy radiated away, and um, <clears throat> even for a carry space time, I mean that's actually another uh, uh, familiar space time. So carry is actually uh, stationary and no radiation either. Okay. In terms of the simplest and uh, probably uh, explicit um, space time that emits radiation uh, is the so called uh, YGR space time.
Well, there, there are actually um, some other space on uh, that emit radiation. For example, it's uh, plane waves, but they're actually not asymptotic flat. So I'm not gonna, we're not going to talk about it so asymptotically. I mean, both uh, uh, Schwarzschild, of course, is, uh, I mean, Mikowski, of course, is flat. And Schwarzschild, of course, is uh, asymptotic flat. You know, when R is large, you actually approach Mikowski space up. Okay, that um, admits uh, radiation um, is the uh, the Vajia space hub. Okay, and um, it's actually uh, uh, the uh, the space hub metric is of this form. So again, this is a very uh, familiar one, okay? Um, again, you can see that you have DDR, they correspond to now geodesics, right? And they, uh, because, you know, DR, GRR vanishes in DUR. And, but the thing that's special is actually this here. So MU uh, is, a, you know, is a, is a, is a function of U. And you actually, that corresponds to, um, To, um, to the total mass of, uh, of a U uh, level set. So again, this picture is uh, you have scribe plus here, and then you have different, um, different level sets. So for example, this correspond to M of, uh, this correspond to U equal to U1, and this one correspond to U equal to U2. And um, well, I just like the M uh, in the case of Schwarzschild uh, is actually a Schwarzschild mass, and that's actually constant in this case. Uh, but in the case of IDR, it turns out this mass here actually depends on U, so it's actually a function uh, in, in U here. Okay. And um, this this uh, this function actually satisfies uh, some interesting property. Um, it was well, it turns out this this IDR space it doesn't satisfy the Vulcan Einstein equation. Well, this is actually a, a solution of the, uh, the Einstein um, glass law uh, equation, glass law equation. So this is actually, um, well, it, it corresponds to, um, you know, gravitational uh, field coupled with the null dust. So in particular, uh, it doesn't satisfy the Vulcan, so this is now Vulcan. So you recall Vulcan equation correspond to Ricci uh, is equal to zero. Okay, so Ricci is actually not equal to zero. So the equation that it actually satisfies is alpha, beta, minus, uh, this is the Einstein equation. So it turns out there's actually um, a, a matter dense, stress energy tensor uh, on the right hand side. Okay. So this is now back, and this is uh, the matter. Uh, in this case, it's actually the, uh, the null dust. And um, T alpha beta, in this case, is actually equal to minus dUm 4 pi r squared uh, <coughs> d alpha u d beta u. So again, this u is just a coordinate. And I'm using this. Uh, I mean, this means that you can choose a different coordinate system, okay, alpha beta. And T alpha beta is actually this. Okay. Uh, no, this is a tensor. This is a tensor. I mean, you take uh, this. You consider this as a one fold, and you take a symmetric product of this uh, this one fold with itself. Okay. So this is actually the. Um, it, it's not a vacuum, and uh, whenever you have a non-vacuum equation, um, it's actually natural to impose um, positivity conditions on a stretched energy tensor. So this actually turned out, this, this term here actually turned out to correspond to the, uh, the mass density of, uh, of null dust. Okay, and this is really just, because uh, uh, you know U is actually null vector here, so this actually, um, 
this is the tensorial part, but this part here corresponds to the mass density of null dust. And this is a, you know, this is a matter, and the only, uh, you know, only observable um, matter density actually has positive mass density. So this uh, energy condition, so you always assume that this is, that is actually positive. So we assume that du of m uh, is positive. I mean, you can, you, this is actually correspond to any kind of energy, local energy condition. I mean, for example, a very common one, the dominant energy condition uh, will actually imply this. Okay. And of course, this will actually imply that du of m is non-positive. Okay. So this natural uh, energy condition you assume on, you know, on null dust actually imply that this m here uh, is actually a monotone decreasing function. Okay, and that actually fit into this picture. You recall this is actually the direction of, uh, of DDU. So when you're moving in this direction, the mass is actually decreasing. Um, so this indicates energy radiation or mass radiation along this direction. So your energy will actually radiate that away along this dot direction, and therefore, uh, if u2 is greater than u1, then the mass here is actually less than the mass here, and that corresponds to this, uh, this identity. Okay. But of course, this is, a, a, as I said, this is the simplest case, and uh, we're actually lucky um, that we can actually write down this, uh, um, this, uh, this uh, solution here. Um, and uh, unfortunately, um, if you want to um, describe other uh, asymptotic flat space time, uh, that is vacuum, uh, there's actually no explicit solution. <laughs> so as I mentioned, this is actually non-vacuum. But this is a space time that, indi that actually um, that indicate uh, uh, radiation, okay? uh, in particular this, uh, this inequality here. But if you want to look for a uh, vacuum space time, um, then just no uh, explicit solution. Uh, basically, you really have to solve um, uh, the Einstein equation. But this is a, is a nice form of an MOU. Well, in, in general, you, you, can, um, you have to um, <clears throat> prescribe that M of U is actually more than decreasing. And often what, is, what happens uh, is you can actually prescribe a, a step function. So for example, uh, you know, m is equal to uh, zero, and then uh, you know, one to zero, for example. And uh, that will correspond to some null dust travel in the, uh, uh, in the null, null direction. Okay. So let me just give you a, a summary of, uh, so of, of other uh, asymptotic flat vacuum space. Uh, so all other, all uh, asymptotic flat Vacuum uh, space time that admit non trivial radiation uh, involve solving. Um, Of course, I mean, in a way that this also involves solving uh, Einstein's equations, but it just in that case, you can actually solve them explicitly. Uh, but um, in, well, if you actually require vacuum, okay, and uh, uh, what we can see, um, I mean, the simplest one is, uh, is probably the, uh, the robinson Troutman uh, space time. And in that case, you still need to solve a, a second order nonlinear parabolic equation. Okay. So let me just talk about uh, these examples, and then I guess I'll, be, I'll just uh, uh, finish after, after this. Okay. So um, I mean, next example would be uh, Robinson, Troutman, uh, space time. This is almost uh, explicit, um, except you need to solve uh, 
So I need to solve a, um, a force order parabolic equation. In, in a way that once you choose a, a particular uh, gauge, um, then your Einstein equation actually reduced to this, uh, uh, this equation. And this is actually not common. As I mentioned uh, yearly, uh, Einstein equation is formulated as a hyperbolic equation. But in this case, you actually have um, um, a parabolic equation. And, um, <coughs> okay. And, um, right. Uh, so I'll, I'll say more about this uh, uh, tomorrow. Okay. And um, another description of, um, I mean, maybe I should say, another description of, uh, of uh, um, you know, uh, of the space time is actually um, at the, the boundary sex coordinate. Um, and this is really just near uh, near square plus. Okay, so we'll talk about this kind of uh, um, description of um, of asymptotic um, flat space time that actually emit uh, non-trivial radiation. As I said, this is really just a solution near um, near square. Okay, and um, and there's also this uh, uh, now quasi spherical. Um, gauge uh, of uh, of, uh, of Barnick. Okay, so this is again near uh, near near square. Okay, so uh, uh, well, I think Pauling is going to talk about this. Uh, of course, this uh, bondy bondy sex also uh, involve this kind of conformal complexification uh, that Ikai is going to talk about. So most of them are, are actually about you know near now infinity. Uh, you want to study radiation, and um, another um, space time is actually um, I don't know this uh, crystal Kleinman. Okay, and. Um, and this is basically the only kind of description um, that connection makes the uh, the connection between initial data set and uh, square plus. Okay. So uh, it actually the only As I, as I just mentioned, um, I mean, well, we want to formulate um, the Einstein equation as an initial value problem. So this is the initial uh, data set. So for example, this, uh, you have you know, two black holes uh, merged here. And then um, you evolve the Einstein equation. Okay, solve this equation. And at the end, you have uh, uh, a square. So in a way that, um, I mean, this, uh, this uh, theory, I'll talk more about it, Robin and Chalman is split. This theory are actually just about uh, square plus, okay? Uh, we don't really know uh, how it actually make connections with, uh, uh, with its in interior. Uh, but uh, Christopher Kleinemann in their proof of the uh, nonlinear stability of Mikowski space, um, they actually start with, say, uh, initial data set here, and then uh, evolve the equation all the way, and then, um, all the way reach uh, uh, future now infinity and show that uh, you actually approach to see uh, the Mikowski uh, space and uh, now infinity. Okay. But of course, that's actually under uh, assumption of uh, this is a very, this actually, these are actually special perturbation of uh, uh, Mikowski. And, uh, or uh, Schwarzschild space time, uh, some more recent uh, work. 
So in this uh, uh, kind of space time, you have very small, small perturbation of Minkowski or Schwarzschild. Then you can solve the complete uh, uh, no, uh, uh, Einstein equation and reach uh, future now infinity, and you show that you actually converge to uh, Minkowski or, um, or, uh, or Schwarzschild. And of course, this is what we actually want. Uh, as I just mentioned, um, the mechanism of, uh, for example, in the first uh, gravitational wave detector, that you know you have two black hole mergers here, and you actually observe something in, in now infinity, and you can actually even claim, um, in a way that uh, I think we'd rather say that's more uh, uh, interpretation uh, than uh, affirmation, and the kind of mechanism is actually not uh, not very at least I think the mathematical theory is actually not very very understood. Um, so it's like um, you know you have two ends of the of the tunnel. Uh, at one end you have uh, initial data set, and at the other end you have uh, scribe plus. And of course we want to understand I mean how they go together. I mean um, so I mean I think we're I mean these two will be digging at the end of uh, of uh, scribe plus. You want to understand you know what happened uh, in in scribe plus, uh, you know under the uh, Vakin Vakin Einstein equation. And in the case of Chris Rudolf Kleinemann, um, they will be able to look at uh, for small perturbation. He can actually go through this, okay? And, um, but uh, in a way that um, you can see that a lot of theory uh, of this uh, mathematical theory, uh, which actually, uh, uh, I mean, the earlier theory were, were mostly developed by physicists, okay? Uh, so they were actually done in the, uh, in the you know, like 50, you know, 50, 60 years ago, okay? Um, and in a way that uh, the kind of mathematics involved was actually too complicated uh, at that time. And so, uh, you know, that's what the study was actually, um, you know, turned into a uh, more linearized study or numerical method. But somehow, uh, you know, there are a lot of advances in the past few uh, decades uh, about nonlinear uh, geometry equations, such as uh, Einstein equations. So we actually know, uh, know better now. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a it's timely to actually look at, uh, review this theory, um, and um, <clears throat> you know, look, look at different uh, kind of descriptions. Okay. So I think uh, maybe, um, yeah. maybe I'll just stop here uh, today. I was planning to go into a Robinson Trauman, but I only have 10 minutes. I won't be able to go too far. And maybe, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe an hour and 20 minutes is good enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess if we make up something, we can use Wednesday, like me. Like, if you need to make up yeah. something tomorrow. Yeah, but, well, I, I still tomorrow. I mean, tom tomorrow morning I'll, I'll continue. Yeah. Uh, I think I'll. I'll try to give a um, description about Robinson space time and also um, the uh, boundary sex approach to, uh, to, uh, to, to a non infinity. Okay, yeah.